Field Corp's controller was preparing the adjusting entries for the company's year ended December 31st, 2020, when the VP Finance called him into her office. Jean-Pierre, she said, I've been considering a couple of matters that may require different treatment this year. First, the patent we acquired in early January 2018 for 525,000 will now likely be used until the end of 2022 and then be sold for 170,000. We previously thought that we'd use it for 10 years in total and then be able to sell it for 115,000. We've been using straight line amortization on the patent. Second, I just discovered that the property we bought on July 2nd, 2017 for 260,000 was charged entirely to the land account instead of being allocated between land and building. The building should be of use to us for, an, uh, for a total of 20 years. At that point, it'll be sold and we should be able to realize at least $50,000 from the sale of the building. Please let me know how these changes should be accounted for and what effect they will have on the financial statements. So we're asked to, we're told that Field Corp follows I for us, and we're asked to answer the following, ignoring income tax considerations and assuming that the company has not previously reported quarterly results. A says briefly identify the accounting treatment that should be applied to each accounting change that is required. So we have two accounting changes here. We've got the patent, which is where we are, we are going to change the residual value and um, we're gonna change the period over which we amortize the patent. So because this is based on new information uh, around what's gonna happen with the patent, this is a change in accounting estimate, which is fine under I for us and ASPE, we can account for it prospectively, meaning no entry to retained earnings is required, but we will calculate a catch-up entry in the current year. The next entry we have is this error where we haven't been depreciating the building because it got charged to the land account. And as we know, land is not depreciated. So this is an accounting error and it will have to be retroactive, retrospective. Okay, so we've done A. B says, assuming that no amortization has been recorded as yet for the patent for 2020, prepare the December 31st, 2020 entries that are necessary to make the accounting changes and record the patent expense for 2020. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go B, patent. Okay, so the purchase price of the patent was, says, was 525000 Okay, and how, did, how were we calculating amortization on this patent? Well, we had taken the 525 and we are gonna subtract out the original, orig, original residual value. So we thought it was gonna be 115,000. We were amortizing it over a period of 10 years. So our original, so what we what we had depreciated here, the way we had calculated it was we had we had been calculating uh, forty one thousand dollars per year under the old method. Okay, so how many years of depreciation have we taken to date here? Well, we purchased this asset on January twenty eighteen, so that means we're going to have twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen because we're in twenty twenty now. So we've got two years of this amortization that's gone through the income statement already. And now we are going to make a change in estimate. It is prospective, but we still need to calculate what the depreciation should be. So what the question is, we know that in 2020, we're gonna take our depreciation with the new residual value off the net book value of the asset. So what we're doing here is we're just calculating the net book value at uh, January, 2020. So our net book value is going to be our purchase price less our accumulated depreciation, which we're not given here. So we know that we're just calculating out how much accumulated depreciation would be in the account. It would be these two years. So our net book value is going to be 443000 So then now what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, well, our 2020 depreciation is going to be, we're going to take the net book value of the asset. We're going to subtract off the new residual value of 170,000. 
And now we're going to divide it by its remaining useful life. So we're in 2020, and it said at the end of 22, it's 2022, it's likely we're going to sell it. So we've got all of 2020, 2021, and 2022. So we're going to divide that by three years. That means we're going to have 91,000 of depreciation expense each year. So we're, our entry is just simply going to be debit amortization expense or depreciation expense it is a patent so we use the terminology amortization 91,000 and we're going to have credit accumulated amortization patent and that's also going to be another 91,000 so that takes care of the patent now and that takes care of b so um, now we're going to make the adjustment for the building. So let's do that. So let's see what's happening with the building. So we accidentally put it to the land account. So there wouldn't be any depreciation recorded yet. So the first entry that we need is very simple. We're simply gonna put the building on our statement of financial position and we're gonna decrease the value of the land because right now the building is in the land account. So we're gonna put, take out the building and it's given us this split right here on this question where it says the land should be 60 and the building should be 200. So we're gonna take out 200 from the land account and we're putting it into the building. So next, we are simply going to need to calculate the depreciation expense on the building. Depreciation on the building. So we're gonna have our building here and we're going to have a residual value. So it says we're gonna have a residual value of 50,000. need brackets there. And then we are going to divide it by its remaining useful life, which it looks like is going to be 20. So we're going to have 75,000, 7,500 of depreciation each year. So our 2020 depreciation is going to be debit, depreciation expense. This is our 2020 depreciation because we need our current depreciation, which is going to be depreciation expense here, 7,500. Now, what are we gonna put in the accumulated depreciation for the buildings? Well, we know that the building was previously not amortized at all, but it should have been. So the building should have been amortized for how many years here? It should have been amortized for 3.5 years because July 2017 to December, of 31st of 2020, which is where we're recording these entries. And we are going to have the amount. Okay, so we're going to take the building and we're going to go here. Let's put this over here. So we're going to take this building and we're going to subtract out. So to calculate the accumulated depreciation, we're simply going to take the depreciation expense each year and we're going to multiply it by 3.5 years because we purchased the building in July of 2017. So July to December 2017 and then 2018, 2019, that's 3.5 years. So we are going to have, so this is our journal entry here, debit depreciation expense. Then we are going to have a credit accumulated depreciation. And this is going to be our this amount here, the 26,250. And then we know we need to hit retained earnings here because this is the correction of an error. Now, are we going to debit or credit retained earnings? Well, if we think about it, we didn't record any depreciation expense before, but we had. So, and now we're recording depreciation expense. So we're going to put, because it was inland, so it was never expense. So we're going to be depreciating. So we're going to go debit retained earnings. And this is going to be the difference, sorry, the difference between the accumulated amortization and the current year's amortization is the correction of the error, because the current year is not a correction of an error. This is the current amount. So the correction of the error then is 18,750. And that's going to be our entry to retained earnings.
All right, lastly, we're asked to, oh yeah, then we're asked in C to identify and calculate where possible the required disclosures for each change. Well, for the patent, we would need to disclose the nature and the amount of the change. So the amortization for the patent has increased by $50,000 um, as a result of the change due in the useful life and residual value. For the land and building, the disclosure should enable the users to understand the effects of the error on the financial statements. And it needs a statement about the nature of the error, the amount of the correction for each period, and the amount related to prior periods. And we need to include this in our statement of changes of retained earnings. And because we're recording under IFRS, also in our statement of changes of equity as well as a statement that comparative information has been restated. And we're asked here, it says, discuss the timing of applying the change in the patent's useful life and residual value. Since the determination of the change was done as part of the year-end process, should the change be applied to 2020 going forward or to 2021 going forward? What are the implications of each approach? And the rationale there is that if management determines that the, that the patent's useful life and residual value changed during the audit process, it's likely that that change occurred during the year. So as long as the factors happen during the year, then it should be applied in 2020. Um, but if for some reason that the change in the factors applied after year end, then we would apply it in 2021 going forward. And that takes us through the conclusion of this question.